The potassium in bananas means they are radioactive. However, you'll need to eat 100 million of them to get sick from radiation poisoning. So not to worry. Something you might need to worry about is if you use radioactive sources in a lab. So you'll find a symbol looks a bit like this, um, which indicates there is a radiation hazard or a radioactive hazard present in the room. Now, as a student, you'll be unlikely to be using them. However, your teacher will take precautions when using the sources. Now, first precaution is to make sure you will keep the source in a lead lined container when you're not using it that's because lead absorbs alpha beta and gamma radiation you want to make sure you limit the exposure time i.e have them out only when you're using them and you usually use tongs when handling them tongs are those kind of oversized tweezer type things which means you're keeping the source at a relatively high distance away from your body so um, if we were to shine our source or point our source in the direction of this equipment here, um, you'd find that they gave a reading. Now, this machine is called a Geiger counter, so G-E-I-G-E-R, and it measures the count rate. Now, the count rate could be present even if we have not got a source pointed at the Geiger counter. That's due to something called background radiation. Now, as the name suggests, background radiation is in the background. It's going through you right now. It's due to some uh, different sources. Um, it could be cosmic rays from space. It could be from rocks um, producing radon gas in the ground. It could be from x-rays in a nearby hospital. It could be nuclear fallout from the 60s and 70s, nuclear weapons testing. And it could be from food and drink like our banana bananas from earlier. Now the ones on the right hand side here are artificial, i.e. man-made, not naturally occurring. So let's take this word then activity, which um, is generally one of the poorer answer questions at GCSE. So activity is defined by the number of radioactive decays per second. So it could be alpha, beta or gamma, but the number of those in a second is defined by the activity. Now, we measure it in becquerels, or shorted as BQ, uh, that's the unit for it. Um, and for example, it, they, sometimes questions might give you a number of decays in a certain time frame. You would have to work out how many there are in a second. So for this example, 110 in 10 seconds, I just divide by 10 to find the answer is 11 becquerels. So that's activity. Now, before we have a look at half-life, a really important note to uh, take care of here is that radiation or radioactivity is a random process. Random meaning we do not know or we cannot predict when an atom will undergo decay. However, we can, if we had enough of them, know a certain amount will decay by a certain time. The analogy is dice. If you have one dice, you don't know whether it's going to be a six or a four or a three. However, if you had a hundred die, you'd know roughly a sixth of them would be each of those numbers. So if we were to measure the activity of various different uh, of a source over time, we'd find the graph looks like this. The activity will decrease um, in this kind of curve shape here. And you need to know how to draw a line of best fit for that. Now let's put some numbers on this. Let's say the activity started at 100. Now the time taken for it to go down to 50, uh, we can measure, um, and that's known as what's called the half life. So the half life of a source. And in words, it is the time taken for the, in this case, the activity to decrease by half or to go down by half. Now, this doesn't just have to be activity, um, as we'll see in a second. Um, this could also be um, the number of nuclei, because the number of more the number of nuclei, the higher the activity. So another valid definition is to say the number of nuclei to decrease by half. Now, it doesn't just mean from the initial to half of that. It could be from 100 to 50. It could be 50 to 25. It could be 60 to 30. If we take a look at a couple of different uh, decay graphs, let's say we have our one we started off with here, kind of quite shallow. And now we have a different decay, um, follow the same sort of shape, but this time it is a little bit steeper. Now what that steepness means is that it has a higher activity. If the number of nuclei per second is decreasing greater, then it means that activity, the number of decays per second, is at a higher level. So if my y-axis is number of nuclei and it's got a steeper gradient, that means that it has got a higher activity. Now this is a problem because if it's more decays per second and it's close to a person, it means that that person will be receiving a greater dose. This is really helpful to know in medical applications because um, the half-life you want really only a few hours. Otherwise, the patient is going to have the source in them for too long, but it's short enough to be measured. And the example here would be in radioactive tracers um, used to measure organ function and things like that.
Now, if they're left in the body for too long, um, you have an issue called contamination. So you need to know the difference between two keywords. Um, one's called contamination or contaminated, um, and the other's called irradiated. So both of them are involved um, uh, are involved when you're talking about radioactive sources. Now, irradiated is less serious. It means you're exposed to radiation. Okay. Now, an example of that would be an X-ray. Um, so that means you're exposed for a short time. Contaminated means that radioactive material is present inside um, a person or an object. So it doesn't have to be a person. Could be the ground. Could be water. Um, whatever. So you need to know those definitions. Like I said, irradiated um, would be an X-ray. Contaminated would be, let's say, um, radiation poisoning. You swallowed something that's radioactive. Now, to finish off here, uh, we've got an exam question. So the exam question we're going to look at is a couple of them, um, which some of them can be really difficult if we are talking about numbers. So this question talks about the half-life of a substance which decays to a quarter of its original activity in three days. So the half-life we could work out, well, if it goes down to a quarter, it's halved once and then it's halved again. So it's halved twice. So in those three days, that means we have halved twice. So therefore, two half-lives in three days, one half-life is going to be 1.5 days. This next example is a little bit trickier um, because we are talking about knowing the half-life and trying to work out um, what a substance, uh, how long it would take to fall to a certain amount. So it says here a substance would fall from 32 becquerels to 4 becquerels. Um, how long does it take to do that? So let's figure out how many times it's halved. So 32 to 16 is once, 16 to 8 is another, and 8 to 4 means it's 3 times it's halved, so it's 3 half-lives. So all we've got to do then is take the value of one half-life, which is 5,000 1,300 years um, and multiply it by three because it's halved three times and that's how you can get full marks on questions involving half-lives.